I, I love the premise of the show. Smart people talking about dumb shit. I think, I think it's dumb people talking about, about smart, smart shit. shit. Oh, we go where we're not supposed to go, baby. The Brilliant Idiots Podcast. Yep, Charlemagne the God. Andrew Schultz. We are the Brilliant Idiots Podcast. Back for another week of Brilliant Idiotness. Andrew Schultz is here. Hezzy. Yo, what's up? I saw you out with the GOAT. Son, Kodak Black. First of all, your whole fashion style changed after one fucking you walk I'm one model, run, bro. you walk one runway I'm in model, Paris. Now. In Paris. What, what, and you come back with a whole regular? new look. <laughs> I'm supposed to be regular now? After I've been at the top of the fashion industry? What do you call that look you're doing right now? Uh, Inspector Clouseau. Ooh, uh, I like that. You know I like man? that. I we like here, that. Bro. I'm solving crimes. I Ask like me that. about it. You could be a detective, mm. but still casual enough to jump up there and do a sneaky stand-up set. Sneaky stand-up set. Give him right 20 right? real quick. Shout out to that LGBT community. What's up? LGBTQ community. <laughs> so you don't even know how funny this shit was. I was so, about to say, you don't even know how gay Paris was. No, no, I mean, yeah. <laughs> but like, yeah. we were we were at this after party for our boy Column, who is the designer for Kids Super, and he designed the men's collection for uh, Louis Vuitton this year. It's okay. like a huge achievement Salute for him. To Column. Feel As free to send homie. some sizes. Absolutely. We're going to hook you up. So uh, he's a, he's at his after party. He's about to give his like, uh, you know, speech saying thank you, whatever. He goes, hey, I just want to thank you guys so much and <laughs> thank my team and just everything that we had to do to get here. Like we built it. And all of a sudden this like girl walks up on stage, grabs the mic from him and goes and shout out to the LGBTQ plus I community. What? We need to recognize the LGBT clue, whatever community. DJ clue, 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 98. Yeah, uh, yeah, we need, yeah. We need to shout out the LGBT. <laughs> so Colum gets the mic back, right? And he goes, that's exactly what I was going to say next. Shout out to the LGBTQ <laughs> plus community, right? We Why though? Why does she do that? No clue, bro. That's no so clue. rude. We didn't. We didn't even. We didn't even know what the fuck was going on. At the end of the party, my boy Jamil, Jamil is um, ends up talking to the girl, the LGBTQ plus whatever mm -hmm. girl, right? Yeah. And he's talking to her. All of a sudden, her friend comes over. Like, what do you want with my friends? What are your plans for her tonight? What are you trying to do? What's going on? And Jamil is drunk as fuck. He should have looked and said, I'm no, gay. No, 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 I no, appreciated no. the shout better, out. Better, better. <laughs> He's drunk as fuck. He cooks and he goes, whoa, 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 whoa. Me and your friend are just having a conversation man to man. All right? <laughs> 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 Misgendering 101. Yeah. Whoa. So, so, Whoa. No, no, he's LGBTQ friendly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? So, hold on. Did he get corrected on that? Not even, bro. I would hope not. Come on, Be man. Be outside. Come on, Shout man. out to LGBTQ+. Plus. At, at, some, at, at some point, you got to realize things like man to man are just the phrases. LG you know what I mean? DJ Clue Plus community. <laughs> That's a new one, bro. The LG DJ Clue Plus community. I be saying you know LGBTQ Disney Plus. That, yo, LGBTQ. Oh. I do. I say that all the time. Only because when I think of the plus, I think Disney. I'm sorry. Listen, y'all got uh, the, the LGBTQ community has a very strong hold on the alphabet. Do you got the alphabet? But when it comes to that plus flag, but the plus is that, Disney, it's Disney baby. I'm, the I, I can't even front Disney, and that says a lot because Disney Plus ain't even been around that long. It's brand new. Brand but they new. Got the they got they got the impact. Low bro. key, they might have snatched the plus from the gates. No, I think they always had it. Oh, well, yeah. maybe they did. I don't know. You know what? I don't know when the plus came about with the LGBTQ thing. Shit, my man, my man Theo Vaughn, he called it the, uh, he was like the, <laughs> the L, he goes, the LG, LSU versus Gonzaga. <laughs> we love y'all, man. <laughs> you know what I mean? Listen, you was with the GOAT, though. Shout out to Alphabets. Yo, um, Kodak, Kodak is the GOAT, bro. Listen. Kodak's the motherfucking GOAT. That Superstar. video of you and Kodak, because you wanted to sing Super Gremlin so bad, but was, you didn't know where the N-word landed. <laughs> <laughs> the cameras were recording. It was, too many, it was too many cameras, bro. You no, was no. into it. That little piece no. of hair was going, boy. You, you, like, you was into but he it. Saw, he saw Kodak was trying to set me up. <laughs> He was he was being super gremlin. He's looking right at me, knowing full M words is flying all over the place, trying to get me to rap along with it. And I was not having it, bro. I was just oh, fist man. pumping. I was like, yeah. Where was that at? That was in Paris? That was in Paris, yeah. But that was last night. That was two nights ago. Oh, I saw it that on the story Saturday. last night. Yeah, yeah, okay, yeah. I okay, just okay. posted that shit. I had to wait a day, check the M words, and then we were good. <laughs> and uh, I did. I so, just, so he, I he, just checked to make sure no, no you're was right. Recorded, bro. You never know. You're right. And you, you walked into a, you walked on the runway. Kodak Rock walked in that same show. He walked in Kid Super Show. He was at the show. Okay. He walked in, um, I saw him walk in another one, but he was at that one. He was at the Louis Vuitton one. Yeah, it was funny. We do stand, you walk and do stand up. That was the concept. That's why there was a bunch of comics out there, right? Oh. And so I walk on stage, right? 
And I go on, it's great to be here at, uh, at, at Men's Fashion Week. Now I got some like jokes planned or whatever like that. And I go, it's great to be here at, uh, you know, New York, uh, no, uh, Paris Fashion Week. Uh, and then all of a sudden I hear a baby cry. Right. right. So my knee jerk reaction when I see the baby is to go for the joke, which is, yo, this ain't the Balenciaga show. <laughs> you know, you know, you know, you know what I'm saying? And what's I'm up, like, what's up with your man? You know <laughs> I mean, that was hey, a good one. Hey, son, that was fantastic. Good. Son, yeah. son, fantastic. Look, look, and I'm like cock ready to go. I hear the yeah. baby cry. My brain starts working. I go, ooh, it's about to shut it down. <laughs> I look over, baby's on Kodak's lap. That's Kodak's baby. Oh. Pivot to a different direction. <laughs> I don't need the smoke <laughs> over here. Kodak wouldn't even have got the joke, I don't think. So he might not have got the I joke. I don't think he would have got Someone the joke. might have explained to him. Yeah, 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 yeah. You know yeah. what I mean? I would have got a nice, no, I get you know, it. nice message. I'm gonna tell you something. Kodak is the goat, and I was watching that video, and I was thinking to myself, man, do people realize how dope Kodak Black is, yo? Not just as a personality, but as a rapper, as an artist. Like the thing that warmed my heart the most, and I know you know these true hip hop heads, like, ah, oh, man, you talk about Kodak Black. Kodak, I look at Kodak Black the same way I look at Kendrick Lamar. I'm, I'm not even joking. I, I I feel like they're they're both two different levels of prolific mm. and they're telling like similar stories just from different places. They're just two different versions of, of the, of the same kid from the hood. Is he, uh, Florida's biggie or no. down South's biggie? No, no, no. He not see yeah, yeah. Storytelling ability. God damn, you just jumped off the balcony. You a Drake fan? Why would you just, <laughs> why, why would you just jump off the balcony? Why is like that a that? bad comparison to compare to him in that way? I mean, his skill, I, I, his I musicality, no, his storytelling uh, ability. Nah, I mean, like, I'm gonna get at the Ross. If we're going, if we're going, if we're doing like just Florida rappers mm. that put you in the vein of a biggie, I'm gonna get at the Ross. But because of physique or because of like their ability, <laughs> right? Nah, lyrics, lyric, lyrical storytelling, all of that. Fair enough. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Fair lyrical enough. storytelling, I, yeah. all of that. I don't know. Listen, you know and, me. And I, I know, know. Yeah. I know people hear that and be like, oh, Kendrick. Kodak, I'm just all I'm simply saying is they're two different levels of prolific. Like they're 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 two sides of the same coin. That's why it made so much sense to me when Kendrick got Kodak to narrate his album. Mm. You know what I mean? I was like, oh, that's a, that's incredible. Yeah. And see, I'm I'm from South Carolina, so I grew up off Project Pat. I love Project Pat just like I love Jay. Yeah. You know what I mean? So yeah. I love when 21 Savage and J. Cole collaborate. I love when Drake and 21 collaborate. You know what I mean? Yeah. Drake is a lyricist. Uh, and, and 21 is a different type of lyricist to me. I love when Kendrick and, you know, uh, Kodak Black collaborate on, on that Silent Hill record. Like, that shit makes mm. so much sense to me. Yeah. So there's much. A, there's a cool thing. You can tell he just loves music. Yes. Kodak. He's just yes. such a musical dude. There was a cool moment when, uh, so Mateo Lane went on stage. Shout, shout out Mateo. You know Mateo. Salute to Mateo. Uh, proud member of the LGBTQ Disney Plus clue, 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 clue community. <laughs> <laughs> yes. So he goes on stage and he starts his set by doing opera. He's a trained opera singer. Oh, fantastic. Fantastic. So he goes up and he starts. Uh, I was about to say, he starts blowing. Now, and, he go, <laughs> and, he goes, and he goes up and he starts singing opera and. There's a crowd of 1,300 people. Kodak, the first person to get up and just start vibing to the fucking yeah. opera. Yeah. And it was one th thing I saw, and I was like, oh, he just loves music. He's the a music. Like, you can hear pure, it. Yeah, exactly. Listen to his music. You can hear the melodies. His musicality yeah. is crazy. You can hear it, man. Yeah, yeah. Salute to the go to Kodak, Kodak Black. Shout out to Kodak. Yeah. Um, what else happened this week? What about you, man? I tried to get you to Paris. You definitely tried to get me to Paris, but I tell you, I got kids, bro. I can't yeah. just up and go to Paris. My daughter had a cheerleading competition this weekend. Yeah. I was in Atlantic City while y'all was in Paris. Ooh. I love Atlantic City. Okay. Okay. Hot take. Hot take. Hot take. And I'll tell you why. I told yeah. my wife this yesterday. You have to be very cognizant of where you go and feel silence. Mm -hmm. You have to be very cognizant of where you go and experience stillness. Mm. And for whatever reason, when I'm in Atlantic City, you know, I love the, I'm not going to say the hotel I love to stay at, but I love staying at this one hotel. People see me there all the time. And it's just something about it that's just a cool vibe where I could literally sit in my room and just write. Yeah. Like, you know what I mean? Like if I was to go away, I've never gone away on a writer's retreat, but if I was to go away on a writer's retreat, I would go to Atlantic City. Whenever I go to Atlantic City, it's just a level of stillness that I experience that is just helps me to create. And Why do you think? I do not know. Like, I really don't know. Like, there's no place in particular in Atlantic City that I like to eat at. You know what I mean? There's no food I can point to. Wait, 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 where at Taylor? Taylor from Philly, where you like to eat at in Atlantic City? Uh, you to the Kelsey's. Oh, Kelsey's? No, no, I've been to Kelsey's. I've been to, I go to Kelsey's a lot. I like Kelsey's. But, I mean, I don't, no disrespect to Kelsey's. I like Kelsey's, but I don't, I, I'm not crazy. You know what I mean? Yeah, like, it's not like, oh, I got to get Kelsey's when I go there, you know? Yeah. But it's just something about Atlantic City that gives me a, a, 
a, a level of stillness. Yeah. I don't know what it is, man. I really don't. And and I've got, because my daughter goes there so much for cheerleading competition, you know, I've been there so many times that there's been a lot of moments that I can remember happening. Like, I was in Atlantic City when I heard about Kobe passing. Uh, you know what I mean? Like, little stuff like that. And it was weird because I'm like, damn, imagine just waking up on a Sunday morning and going to do an extracurricular activity, you know, going to do something with your daughter that she enjoys doing, mm. and then something like that's happening. So mm. you know my anxiety is through the roof that whole mm. Sunday. But, um, yeah, it's just a level of stillness I get when I go to Maybe Atlantic City. Maybe there's a stillness that comes to the fact that, like, you're in a casino, there's cameras everywhere, nobody's going to try some dumb shit, there's security everywhere. So there's, like, there's a, a level of security that you probably don't experience on an every day. It's not about the security. It's, really? it's, it's literally about my brain is quiet in Atlantic City. I do yeah. not know why. I'm yeah. just very aware of my energy when I'm in Atlantic City. Mm. So salute to Atlantic City. We got our own day in Atlantic City too, man. The man Marty Smalls, he gave the Breakfast Club our own day. Really? Um, yeah, yeah. A few years ago, like three, four years ago. How is the uh, new host search for the Breakfast Club going? You know, that's interesting. I don't know if it's necessarily a new host search. Or maybe not search, but how is the... I love it. You know? I don't want to call it a revolving door, but like... You it's only been three. Rotating. Yeah. Yeah, Rotating. It's, it's only yeah, been okay. three. We Who's had your J favorite so far? So far? Yeah. I like all of them for different reasons. Okay, go. I like Jason Lee for the rumor report. Um, I like I like Angela Rye and Tiffany Cross for elevated conversations about politics. You know, we do a segment called Front Page News, hmm. but we talk about the headlines. You hmm. know what I mean? So when we're talking about those headlines that's happening, the political stuff, they're perfect for that. And like Lala is, her background is radio. Like she yeah. comes from radio. That's how yeah. Lala got started in the entertainment industry. Like yeah. I've been knowing Lala for years, you know, through radio. And then me, you know, and then I got history with all of those people. Like Jason Lee, me and Jason Lee, people don't know me and Jason Lee did a pilot for Sirius XM 13 years ago. Wow. No, probably, no, no, longer. Like 14, wow. 15 years ago because I was fired when we did that pilot. It was me, Jason Lee, I think Little Mo and Claudia Jordan. Or maybe it was Claudia and Melissa Ford. I don't remember, but I know it didn't get picked up. Yeah. You know, or, you know, people know Angela Wright. That's my good sister, you know, and her and Tiffany are, are super cool. And me and Lala, same thing. Me and Lala go, go back to radio, but I was, Lala, one of the first people to give me a major television look I saw when that. I was on her reality yeah, show. You went on that date? No, that was a different reality show. That was the SWV show. Oh, yeah, yeah. but wasn't Lala... Lala was Lala's full court life. I thought that you went on a date with one of her friends or nah, something. No, I was like one that. of her. I was one of her lesbian friends on the show. Yeah, so it was that's me, right, that's Dice, right. Pole. Like, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. But yeah. so it's like I, I have history with all of them. You know what's going to be interesting is when we start bringing people in that there is no history with. Ooh, you know who's the first person you got like that? Uh, I don't want to say. It's next week though. Oh really? Yeah. I mean, I know the person, but we don't. We don't have no. Like, there's. I can't. Like, I can. Look to mad moments with me and La that go way back. Like even this morning on the radio when I was talking about uh the last time I was in the script club was with Ghana. When we went to Ghana and we was all in the script club together. But before that, the last time I can remember being in the script club was in Miami with Lala. Like 11, 12 years ago. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Me, Lala, Trina, Dice, and I think Rico Love at G5. So like we, I mean, I'm saying we, I got history with these people. The next person that's coming next week, I have zero history with. I know mm. them. And, you know, we've interviewed with, I've interviewed them before, but I don't know them. But I enjoy it, man. It's just new energy every week. New energy is fun. It's just very fun. Yeah. You know, and, and it's like, yo, when you see First Take, and I just finished reading Stephen A. Smith's book. And, you know, Stephen A. Smith talks about how, you know, when Skip Bayless left and then they brought in Max Kellerman. And he talks about why him and Max didn't work. But then he talks about, you know, how now it's like a committee. So it's all of these different people coming in all the time and everybody's got different opinions. It's like, you know, you, you, you work with people for a certain amount of time. You kind of know what to expect yeah. to a certain extent. So when it's different people all the time, you don't know what's going to what's gonna come out of somebody's mouth, you know? Yeah, so I, I, I mean, I'm enjoying it. I'm, I'm thoroughly enjoying it. But people, boy, the Internet is a crazy, crazy Wait, place. Because the Internet, y'all love every single person that comes. <laughs> and y'all hate every single person that comes. For example. And y'all want every, it's like every person that comes, no need to look for anybody else. Uh, but they did that with Jason Lee. Jason Lee was the first person. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> like, yeah. like, what are you, like, what are you talking about? You know what I mean? Like, give it a moment. Like, let things breathe. Like, let's, let's revisit this conversation six months from now. Yeah. A year from now. Yeah. After there's been a plethora of people. Yeah. That have come through. But no, I'm, I'm, I'm enjoying it. I'm enjoying it. Uh, go back to that story about the LGBT community because this is interesting. 
how the how the LGBT community allegedly is mad at Beyonce. But wait, wait. Why would the LGHDTV community be <laughs> mad? It's at wild, Beyonce? right? For somebody who's been an ally. Like their you, whole like, career. Like you know this person is an ally, but they say she's facing. I don't even know. By the way, when I hear this shit, I take it with a grain of salt. She's facing backlash for performing a private show in Dubai. Backlash nowadays just means 10 tweets. Okay. Yeah. But she's facing criticism for accepting a reported $24 million to perform at the launch of a luxury hotel in Dubai. Yeah, the Atlantis. Uh, Everybody was there. That shit wasn't a private show. It was 1,500 people. Because homosexuality remains a crime punishable by death in the United Arab word. I can't pronounce. What's that word? Emirates. Yeah. With some people noting the singer's positioning as a supposed, woo, LGBTQIA plus ally. Thoughts. I mean, isn't gay marriage illegal in tons of countries? Like, should she not perform there as well? Yeah. Like, I don't know. I mean, I understand, like, being frustrated by this because you'd want her to essentially boycott these places in support of you and your cause. Well, at the same time, she can go there and get $24 million and then continue to promote you and your cause with that kind of money. That's right. That's right. And what about states in America that have anti-LGBTQIA plus legislation. What about Especially states in, in regards to transgenders. What about states in America that got uh, anti, well, what some people would say is anti-woman legislation. Absolutely. You absolutely. know what I mean? So, 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 so should she not go there? That, she, I, you will find a, a problem with every single every place you go. country, city, That's right. state. That's right. So there's no place to perform. That's right. If you look under the hood, yeah. you can find some legislation in this state, our country, or even town that you may not necessarily agree with. So you know what I say? What's that? Let's find pockets of joy where we can. Yeah. You know where you can find pockets of joy? At a fucking Beyonce concert. Yeah. Let's all come together. The LGBTQIA, LGBTQIA allies. Every gay motherfucker in the United Arab Emirates wasn't at that show. You're out your goddamn mind. Popping lives. that poom poom for a goon. Damn right. You know what I'm saying? Popping that Damn boy right. poom. What, what, what is it called? You know, Alex. Burka. What's that boy Pum Pum called? Is that what it's called? Oh, Bussy. Bussy. No. Popping that yeah. Bussy. Fuck, I know. Why, 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 hey, why do you know about that so no, He's a professor in queer studies now. You're a professor in queer studies? Yeah. Queer theory. Yes. Queer theory, yeah. Queer theory. You What's know what the theory A in queer theory it? stands for? What's it, what? Alex. <laughs> That you are the A in LGBT. You, you know, there's no A in queer theory. That that was, <laughs> I know. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> that's when two thoughts. That's the intersectionality of two thoughts. That is it. Yeah. That's what that was. That was the intersectionality of two <laughs> thoughts. For sure. I am. I am. I am a professor in queer theory. How do I? How do I get my doctorate in that? I just found out what queer theory is yesterday because I was listening to uh, Ron DeSantis, Big Ron, Ron. You know, yeah. talk about why he doesn't want uh, the African American. Did you? Do we have that audio, Taylor? Why he doesn't want the African American studies. Do we have that story? He doesn't want African American studies in Florida. They shut it down. The, the, Whoa. Florida, the Florida Department of Education. Why? It's a specific title, though. What is it called? African American AP. What is it? Is he? Wait, are you talking about that that other thing where you're like, you do you teach the kids critical race theory or whatever? Yeah, that's that's different than no, no, African American no, studies. No, no, no. It's not that. It's it's it's, it's part. Of the, they, that's under it. Yeah. There it goes. DeSantis says Florida rejected new AP course on African American studies for imposing political agenda. Now, under the political agenda, they feel like things like critical race theory, uh, the, uh, what, what I just found out about queer theory. AP and, class means uh, advanced, advanced placement. placement. So basically, yeah. you get college credit during high school. Yeah, and they say in political movements that advocated for abolishing prisons. Now, when you hear Ron DeSantis speak on it, like mm -hmm. when he says that's a political agenda, that's the wrong side of the line for Florida standards. You have the audio? OK, you know, as you know, uh, in the state of Florida, our education standards not only don't prevent, but they require teaching black history, all the important things. That's part of our core curriculum. Mm -hmm. This was a separate course on top of that for advanced placement credit. And the issue is we have guidelines and standards in Florida. Uh, we want education, not indoctrination. If you fall on the side of indoctrination, we're going to decline. If it's education, then we will do this course. So when I heard it didn't meet the standards, I figured, yeah, they may be doing security. It's way more than that. This course on black history, what are one of, what's one of the lessons about queer theory? Now, who would say that an important part of black history is 
queer theory. That is somebody pushing an agenda on our kids. And so when you look to see they have stuff about intersectionality, abolishing prisons, that's a political agenda. And so we're on, that's the wrong side of the line for Florida standards. We believe in teaching kids uh, facts and how to think, but we don't believe they should have an agenda imposed on them. When you try to use black history to shoehorn in queer theory, mm. uh, you are clearly trying to use that uh, for political purposes. Okay, so a co- couple real quick things on this. Mm-hmm. Uh, one, this is a very, one, we do teach political agendas in our education. Absolutely. We just all agree, and by we, I don't know who we is, but like, you want to, it is agreed, it is agreed that like, this is the agenda of America, and this will be taught within our school system. Yeah. I like the fact that he says we do teach African American history within our school systems, and the reason he's stopping, it wasn't because they're teaching black things, is because they look like they were trying to shoehorn new political beliefs into a course that would have coverage, because no politician would want to take down a black history course because they're not taking it down for teaching black stuff. They're taking it down for trying to shoehorn other, I guess, ideo- ideological points of view into uh, an educational course for for high school students. What's interesting about this is this is the exact thing that politicians do with their bills. They call a bill Absolutely. the uh, the don't hit women bill. Yeah. And then they shoehorn in. Absolutely. Hey, Let's uh, make sure rich people don't pay any taxes at all. And then it forces these politicians to be like, I vote no for the don't hit women bill. That's what happened with the 94 crime bill, right? Like the 94 crime bill, Bernie Sanders voted for it. But when you ask Bernie, why did you vote for the 94 crime bill? He said, because there was a bill in there against a a bill in there that was uh, uh, against violence against women. Yes. You know what I mean? So he was was, was like, he was like, I was voting for that. Yep. Right. Um, That's why when I when I when I said that, you know, when you hear Ron. DeSantis say why he doesn't agree with this, it sounds good on his face, right? Like, oh, because I don't want any political agendas being pushed. Yeah, you don't want yeah, yeah, but, any. Yeah, but the, re- yeah. the, the reality is, when you understand what queer theory is, you realize, no, nah, queer theory is black history. And I had to ask the question. I, I had to ask somebody yesterday. I'm like, well, what is queer theory? Because, you know, when you hear it, you're like, is somebody teaching my kid to be gay? I, right? I'm just listen. I'm a country guy from the south, yeah. so if you, you know, what I'm saying I can see people in Florida like I know I don't want my kids being taught about no queers in school. Like I can see it yeah, yeah. immediately, right? Yeah. Not that there's anything wrong with that. No, there's nothing wrong with it. Right. I mean, I'm speaking from the perspective of somebody from. Damn, Al, why are you so Florida. defensive about exactly. that specific? Son, I'm just, you know, yeah, helping it. You know, I get what you're I'm saying. A, yeah, I'm I'm good, good, good. No, so he's right. He's right. Because somebody will take that one clip and <laughs> yeah. just see me on the line. I don't want to give you a talk about kids. You know what I mean? They take everything out, right? So, but black history is gay history. I mean, I don't want anybody teaching my kids how to be gay. But no, that's not what's being taught. Black history, some some black history is... I also is, don't want anybody teaching my kids how to be straight. I don't want my kids being taught about sexuality. Yeah, don't teach my kids I, I'm, how I'm, to I'm, fuck I'm, or who to fuck. I'm with you. I don't, mind sex ed, I don't mind sex ed classes. Sex ed classes are great. Yeah, yeah. But sex ed is different yeah. than teaching someone All that how identity, to be straight or I'm with how you. Gay, the identity, like... sexuality stuff, honestly, I don't think that has any place in school because yeah. it causes too much content. I'm going to teach my kid how to be gay. No, I think, that, I think kids... <laughs> <laughs> I teach my kid how to be gay. When and you're going to start with COVID. Come, yeah. Wouldn't you rather your child come to you Say again? You would rather your child come to you as a parent and then you can have that conversation with your child and then instill in your child the confidence they need to go out into yes. the world. Yes. But what I was saying about this is uh, queer theory. And I asked somebody what it is yesterday and they said, oh, it's just it's just a, a theory that is discussing sexuality and identity. And it was like, for example, they might discuss uh, the role James Baldwin's blackness and gayness played in his life or mm-hmm. Bayard Rustin. Right. And I'm like, oh, well, that makes sense. You know what I mean? Um, but the reality is, and I could be wrong, correct me if I'm wrong, I never saw James Baldwin or Bayard Rustin lead with their sexuality. It was all about mm-hmm. blackness first. Like, if you go and you watch some of those, you know, debates between, you know, well, not even debates, but panel discussions between Malcolm X, Bayard Rustin, and James Baldwin, it's some of the most insightful, you know, intellectual conversation you're ever going to hear. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Now, Chris brought up a good point. Chris said, well, did they not talk about their sexuality because they 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 Thought didn't want to or they couldn't? Yeah, uh, Maybe a distraction too, or maybe they couldn't back then. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like that was what, the t- t- 50s and the 60s. Like, You're asking people to accept a lot at that point. Exactly. And you're gonna, and they're going to be exactly. black people to go, wait, that guy's gay? All right, I'm not listening to that motherfucker. A lot of us didn't even yeah. realize Baldwin was gay. Uh, at least for me, I didn't realize that the way much later in life. I didn't know until life. you said right now. No, <laughs> nor I did I care. Clue. To me, he's an author. 
He's a, one of the most brilliant people Beautiful you're writer. ever going to hear from, right? I didn't even know he was black. Man, shut up, man. <laughs> I didn't know he was black. Man, shut right up, now. Man. I didn't know. Shut up. I didn't know. <laughs> you're lying. But <laughs> James Baldwin? But I'll tell you why. Alex Grandfather <laughs> is black, bro? Man, shut up, man. <laughs> but, <laughs> Yo, but come but on. Listen, he was a good shooter, too. <laughs> I, I, he, he definitely was. But I'll, tell, I'll also tell you why that, that's important, right? Because you can't even discuss this generation of black history movements, at least the last 10, 15 years without discussing BLM. BLM was founded by people in the LGBTQ community, right? And also BLM, part of their agenda, it wasn't just blackness. Part of their agenda was, Houses. you know, advancing rights for the LGBTQ oh, yeah, 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 yeah. community. Advancing real estate you know what portfolios I mean? across North America. And, so to me, yeah. it's like having those conversations is good. Because yes. it shows how we've always stood on the front lines together. That is 100% true. You know, it's also it's also OK to discuss things in a vacuum. For example, if you're learning how to be a specific type of doctor, a dermatologist, yes. like you learn everything about the skin and you don't That's have right. to learn about, be, you know, the penis, like and being a urologist and like some of that stuff isn't, you know, important to you. That's right. Yes. Does, you know, some stuff. Thing that happens in the body that affects your penis also affect your skin. I'm sure. Yeah. But. It would be a distraction, a distraction to urologists to learn about all this dermatology stuff. That's right. That's so right. it's okay to separate those things. We do it in the sciences all the That's time, right. and we can do it in the social sciences as well. And this is an advanced course. Yeah. You know what I mean? So you would dig a little deeper. You know, you you would dig a little deeper about James Baldwin and you know the intersectionality between his sexuality and his race, and you know yeah. even having the conversation about why he probably couldn't speak about it more freely. You know, back then, or what we just talking about now, was it a distraction? Like, we don't know. Yeah. And we won't know if we don't have these discussions and teach these courses. But I think that is very important to talk did about you, the James Ball with the Bayard Rustin. That famous uh, debate, uh, he was in New York. I think he's speaking up at like the 92nd Street Y or something like that. James oh, Ball. Who, who was the debate with? And I forget the guy that he's debating, but he talks about it. And then he says that he's 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 a homosexual. OK. And uh, and the. It was Buckley, right? And he Buckley. says he's a homosexual. And then th uh, the crowd there, there's a guy in the crowd that just goes, Hey, yo! <laughs> <laughs> yo! Hey, yo! You heard that? That is wild gay, yo! Hey, yo, James Ball, you wildin' for that one, yo! Hey, yo! That would be the quintessential That's New York thing crazy. to do, right? It was uptown, bro. I wonder was, what the New York pause was back in the day. What was the A, yo, back in the day? Oh, we know what it was. Never well, mind. <laughs> we, know, we know what it was. <laughs> we know exactly now. I don't know why I even asked that question. <laughs> we know exactly what it exactly. was in the 70s, 80s, and 90s. Anyway. <laughs> My God. Moving, <laughs> Moving right along. <laughs> uh, Amy Roback uh, <laughs> yeah. said she was blindsided. Oh, no. By the extent of TJ Holmes' alleged affair. This can't be real, right? This can't be real. Remember, did, did we have the conversation here where I said they were going to demonize TJ Holmes for this? Are we still talking about these good, good morning America motherfuckers? It's just wild to me that all of a sudden, they digging up information. Oh, TJ Holmes, you know, slept with another worker at GMA. I'm like, well, what? Dig up some stuff on Amy. I'm sure you can find some stuff on her. Oh, he was fucking multiple people at work. Well, I, I saw one. I saw one other one. Oh, yeah, and that's what they're saying. They're saying, Amy, well, see, and that, the story came out this morning that Amy was blindsided. Now it says the source tells Page Six that Amy was not blindsided, as the report claims, at least by Holmes' relationship with producer, uh, the young lady. Uh, they don't they. But they don't like to say her name for whatever reason, which I think is I don't understand that. I don't understand not saying the their name, name, but saying his name. Yeah, I don't get it. The insider claims he was upfront with her regarding their former relations. Page Six has reached out to reps for Roback and Holmes for comment. Man, this is cares, wild, bro. bro. It's like, yeah, you can't be shocked the cheater cheated. He, he he was cheating, wasn't he? Wasn't that the whole big deal? Nah, black men don't cheat, bro. Oh, true. My bad. I yeah, forgot. Yeah, that. Do yeah, they yeah. teach that in your queer class? Yeah. Yes. That's one of the main <laughs> lessons. <laughs> what are you talking about? Yo, that's need, one of the main we lessons. We need to teach that in all the schools, man. I think <laughs> in queer I'm... theory, black men don't cheat. Okay? That's why DeSantis is so pissed off. Why? Because <laughs> he's like, yo, he said, we don't cheat neither, bro. The fuck? <laughs> Trump trying to out me. Like, white men don't cheat neither, too. <laughs> you know? 
<laughs> oh my God, man. Uh, what else? Drake fan tried to fly at a concert. That was cool. <laughs> yeah, but you know, we forget that Drake fans are owls, bro. <laughs> no, for real, we don't think about that enough. Now, y'all laughing, but it's the truth. Like somebody trying to bring it back to the essence. Guy. I'm serious. Do you realize if you see a baby owl on that's the ground, true. it's because they were trying to fly? That is a fact. I'm from the country. I know these things. Oh, really? If you see a baby owl on the ground, it's only because that baby owl was trying to fly. And it takes a few weeks for them to learn how to fly. Oh, wow. That's a fact. So that was just a, a, a young owl. Trying to fly at a Drake concert. I don't yeah. see the problem. Did you uh, Did you have any friends that went to the concert? Oh, yeah. I had a bunch of friends that went to the concert. And what was the feedback? Yeah, they loved it. Everybody I know loved it. Uh, he just crushed it, huh? Yeah. Ni uh, Ni actually, Nyla and... Uh, oh, yeah. I saw Nyla. Yeah, Nyla and Bianca went. Salute the, salute the Big B from the BX. Okay. Yeah, they went to the concert. Um, and I have some people that went uh, 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 Saturday as well. They just enjoyed it. They just thought it was a good show. Listen, yeah. man... <laughs> He's a beast. The guy's a beast. Say yes. I don't care. How, I don't. I'm. He's not. Drake has never been my cup of tea. Y'all know that. I like when he raps. You know. Don't care for the singing and everything. But I've been to a Drake show. I went to Drake at the Garden. And then and when I went wild. to Drake at the Garden, I was like, Oh, he's. He, I get it. Yeah. I, I get it. Like yeah. I. I can't think of too many rappers who can run the gamut like, like him with yeah. music. Yeah. You know what I mean? I mean, yeah. It's not close. It's, it's not even close. And get, and when he does Afro beats, it's over. <laughs> Cause you know, wow. you know that's the next genre of music Drake oh. gonna jump on. You know the Afro beats is coming. Really? Yeah. What it's, is Afro beats? Afro beats is going Man, to be. Man, did I have a joke that I can't say? <laughs> Man, did I? Yeah, have Yeah, we don't, we don't, we don't need you say. to say it. We really don't need you to say it. But because we don't have to cut anything so far in this episode, <laughs> so I'm so shut up. Just okay. not gonna say it. Okay, but. let me see if it's funny. Don't say it. <laughs> <laughs> We gonna bleep it. <laughs> <laughs> it's good. Be honest, it's good. The kid is good. He's good, man. <laughs> He's good. <laughs> He's good. <laughs> He's good. <laughs> I get it. Yo, come I on, it. man. Come on. That's funny, bro. It's funny. I mean, what he what he said is it funny? <laughs> but what I said, the is context funny. is funny. It, it's funny. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's funny. Uh, somebody um, might think that if it was an alien that was just learning about all these. <laughs> <laughs> Alien was just learning about all these. Yeah, new aliens like that's why we're here. That's we're here to stop that we, shit. We 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 heard it was getting more popular. Drake was doing it. Everybody gonna do it. We didn't know Drake was even. <laughs> you, go, you, you go out me. Oh my god. You go out me now. You go out me now. <laughs> no, we're gonna bleep both of them. <laughs> yeah. But it's oh, yeah, but man. it's good, bro. But Afro Beach, I yeah. Afro Beach is absolutely gonna be the biggest genre of uh black music soon. Really? 100 percent I yeah. see it coming. I see it coming. Um wow. hip hop, I love hip hop. Uh but hip hop, man, man, it, it, the hip hop is becoming a deaf style in a lot of ways. Yeah. And yeah. you know, there was a time when we all used to just look Afrobeats at, feels more positive. It's very fast what I'm saying. Yeah. When you got people actually getting killed all the time and these fights all the time and people overdosing from drugs. Like I, 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 I see people moving to an alternative and I don't even think people realize it. Turn on the radio right now. You gonna hear so much Afrobeats playing? Bro, I was listening to Hamburger Man and he was fucking... <laughs> what the fuck is Hamburger Man? <laughs> Whatever the guy's name is. What's Who? The, was it? Oh, Burner Boy. Burner Boy. And How the fuck you get Hamburger Man out of Burner Boy? I thought it was Boy. Burger Man. Burger Boy. Oh, 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 oh. And that <laughs> shit is so fire. That's my new favorite artist. I saw Burner Boy in... Um, yeah, WizKid. Also. WizKid fire too. I saw Burner Boy in Ghana. I went to Afro Cello. He was the last person that performed. You know what really? I mean? Really? Yeah. Tore the roof off the place? It kill, I mean, come on. He's a superstar over there. Yeah. Super, I mean, he's a superstar here. Yeah, the music you know is, I mean? is fantastic. But it's, it's absolutely, I think, going to be the biggest genre of black music, which is ultimately going to end up being the biggest... You know, genre of music in the world. Like Ed Sheeran and Burner Boy got a song that's so fire. What's the name of it? I can't remember the name of it right now, but that shit is fire. You know what I mean? Like, like Af Afro Beach is a thing, and it's only a matter of time. Like, it's already taking over. Like, turn your radio on. Do Every other song is going to be an Afro Beach song. Yeah. No, you do see the pop there. Do you think that. Own it. it. it say again. Huh? That song. Own it. Own it. Yeah. Yep. What's Own It? That's the name of the Ed Sheeran and Burner Boy song. Oh, fire. shit. Fire. Yeah. I mean, it's, I don't know. I just think it's cool that, like, <laughs> finally has something that they could, like, connect on. <laughs> Come on. 
All right, man. This guy, <laughs> this guy, man. What? This guy. What? Speaking of Afro beat, Shannon Sharp was wanted to fight <laughs> the <some> bad basketball <laughs> players. Uh-huh. Shannon Sharp wanted to fight the whole Memphis Grizzlies bro. team. <laughs> There's hamburger man when you need him, bro. He got to pacify this whole situation. <laughs> what is that song? Uh, last, last. Last, last. 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 Now everybody go get breakfast. <laughs> last, last. Last, last. You know what I liked about this? What? Nothing. Yo. I didn't like nothing about this Shannon Sharp altercation, man. Okay. okay. You know why? Because I need Shannon to have... No, I'm going to tell you what I do like about it. I like, I like the fact that him and his... Uh, him and... Uh, T. Uh, Morant. T. Morant, John Morant's father, pieced it up at of the course. end. Of course. I like that. Two OGs, Two OGs, man. man. And I don't even know what, what, what this led to, but I got to see Shannon Sharp do this to Skip Bayless just once. Oh, check him one time? Just one time. Yeah. I want to see people pull Shannon away from Skip just yeah. once. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. Just, just one time for the culture. Yeah. You know, I want to see that look back mean mug at Skip one time. Put some fear in Skip a little bit, man. Yeah. That's another thing I don't like about Stephen A's book. You reading Stephen A's book, Steven's talking about all the times he's been like reprimanded and suspended for shit that he said. And when you read, you know, when you remember these moments, you're like, ah, did that really warrant a suspension? Like, I mean, he, and he's lost opportunities. Oh, really? Oh, yeah. He was supposed to be the, uh, the he was supposed to get Sports Center before Michael and Jamel. But he lost the Sports Center gig because of uh, something he said about Aisha Curry and Savannah James. You know what I mean? What like he, he he pitted them against each other. You know, like 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 he say that he did with like Rihanna, Beyonce, kind of right. You know, but but he that's what he hates. He hates when people say, and we, we talk about this on the Breakfast Club. He's on the Breakfast Club uh t- 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 yesterday. But we, we he talks about how he hates when people say I'm pitting Rihanna against against Beyonce or I'm pitting black women against each other. And what I was trying to explain to him was intention versus impact. Mm. That may not be your intention, but that's that still how it comes impact. off. You know what I'm saying? If if, if I say Adam Sandler can't fuck with Andrew Schultz. Bam, bam, bam. That's me pitting Andrew against Adam Sandler. Against yeah, Adam Sandler. You yeah, know what yeah, I mean? Like, yeah. it just is what it is. Like, wh- whether that's my intention or not. Respect the OG, man. Adam Sandler, the motherfucker. But that's dope. my point. And yeah. so it's just like, um, yeah, but he, Skip never got in trouble for anything. Wild Ooh. take Skip Bayless never got in trouble. And I, 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 had, to, I had to ask Skip now. I'm like, yo, did Skip ever get in trouble for anything? And he was like, no. And why do you think that is? Because he's white. Oh, really? Yes. Oh, yeah. yeah. He is white, yeah. <laughs> yes. yes. But he never got in trouble. Not only did he never get in trouble for anything, yeah. when Stephen A. got suspended, Skip said, well, I'm not coming back till he comes back. So he supported Stephen A. Yeah. He supported Stephen A. Didn't come to wow. work for a whole week. Wow. And nothing happened to him. Wow. You know what I'm saying? I respect it. You know what I mean? Yeah. I respect the stance he took, but damn. It's just like, yo, is there a double standard or what? Yeah, you and can. I and I, I also think it's corny. That, you know, if my job is to debate, and my job is to give my opinion, you know, that means my job is to be polarizing. Mm. That means my job is to say things that's probably going to rub people the wrong way. Mm. So when I rub people the wrong way, don't s- suspend me mm. or, or make me or, or take away an opportunity from me. This is my job. This yeah. is what I'm here to do. Yeah, you know. Yeah, yeah. That's interesting to me that they would, because they've they've built around him like to me he's the king of espn did you know he got fired from espn stephen a smith yes wow i didn't know that either he got fired in like 2009 he didn't come back to like 2011 not only did he get fired got fired and they didn't want him on television period wow so that was was, radio or something like that and that that was a stretch that's how he got back in he got back in because of radio oh wow yeah i didn't know that either i guess it's so much shit i'm like damn i didn't know that does he have a little memoir coming out? It's out. It's called Straight Shooter. It's a, ph- a phenomenal read, man. Phenomenal read for a number of reasons. I and, and number one, you don't know anything about Stephen A's personal. What's life. the name of it? Straight Shooter. Really? <laughs> no, because Alec Baldwin has a book coming out. <laughs> yeah. <I don't> know. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm serious. He has a book. You just know, you just know his brain working. I'm like, all right, here we go. Here we go. And, you know, luckily he kept it to Alec Baldwin. Yeah. Kept to Alec Baldwin, yeah. dude. There's some other places he could have yeah. went this week, yeah. but not no, me. you know what I mean? Not me. Good, good. I'm glad. <laughs> not me. <laughs> you know, I'm just out here. But. Um, <laughs> 
<laughs> but no, it's a phenomenal book for a number of reasons. And uh, no, the first reason is because you don't hear anything about Stephen A's private life ever. Yeah. Would you would you know Stephen A had two baby mamas? God. Exactly. You hear Taylor over there like, what? Yes. Stephen A got two baby mamas. Is he with any of them now? No. Wow. Stephen A said he was out. Stephen A said he out here. He talks about how he's not getting married and why. And it's because of, you know, what he saw his father put his mom through. Like, the book oh, is wow. really, it's really fascinating. But what it's about all- the snow bunnies? Did he talk about the snow bunnies? Is he into the snow? I don't know, you know. That's a good question. You didn't ask if he was into the snow? Nah, I don't be caring about stuff like that. Really? Nah, 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 nah. I, I care when it's obvious. If you, you out here parading Stephen them around. Is into the snow? No, I don't actually. Bro, you don't get a hairline like that. Okay. No, you do <laughs> have a hairline like bunnies. that when you hit your You think so? Yes. If you into you the think so? snow. Yeah, they don't know nah, anything about man. a hairline. They don't know anything yeah, about it. Yeah, you're right. Black woman would have made you shave it off yeah. a long yep. time ago. No, yep. you're right. You're right. White women right. let you hold on you're to right. that little right. bullshit. But a black woman will love you regardless. Say again? Black woman will love but you he regardless. He's not looking for love. He's looking for a grip. He's looking for a grip. <laughs> 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 he is. He is. He is. He is. No, nah, I don't know. I never thought about it with Stephen. But probably because Stephen ain't out parading it. If you're if you a guy that's out parading your women. Then it's different. Then it's different. You yeah. know what I mean? If he was out here parading with the snow bunnies, marching with them, you know no, what I mean? No, he's not doing that. Snow bunny he's lives matter. That's different. You know what I mean? Not, not you know? Lives matter. For real, man. Yeah, yeah. But he's into some winter activities. Let's just put it that way. Yeah. Maybe. I don't know. I think he's out there sledding, maybe snowmobiling. You think so? <laughs> Absolutely. Nah, y'all can't put that on Stephen. I'm just, I, I'm, I'm not going to put it past them that he might be into the luge. Why you think that? <laughs> I'm just saying, I mean, it's Stephen A. Smith. You know, he think loves he's basketball. I mean, my man loves basketball, but he also might like that that Colombian. Ah, Stephen reminds me. He seemed like a brother that loves sisters, man. No, I think he also likes sisters. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah but yeah, I don't yeah. think he discriminates at this age. At this age, you should be able to dabble in whatever the fuck you want. You already got two yeah. baby mamas. You already got two black kids. We don't know. I don't know. I don't know what is, what race is baby mom though. Oh, I don't know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I did ask him that though. I was like, what does Disney think of that? Ooh, <laughs> you know what I mean? yeah. What do you I, say? Uh, I forgot his well, answer. Disney has an then they can't play NBA games anymore. What you mean? What you're saying if they have an issue with like children out of wedlock or whatever? Oh yeah. <laughs> like, <laughs> you know, like I'm just like clearly, clearly you got to cancel just, all your NBA. Yeah, it's over. It's like hey, you're out of the sports game. <laughs> I don't think Mickey and Minnie were ever married. Mm-mm. I don't think so. Definitely not. I don't think Mickey and Minnie were ever married, bro. Definitely Did not. Mickey and Minnie ever have kids? We don't know. <laughs> Stephen A's the motherfucking goat, bro. He's the... He, I can't even... I can't even say... I was that. about to say something, but then I don't want to disrespect any of the OGs, the Howard Cosells of the world. No, no, no. You could, you could say Brian it. The Brian Gumbles. You could say it. It's different. He might be the he, greatest he, sportscaster of all time, Of all time, bro. Of all time. The, the energy, the output, the yeah. amount of content that he's put out the amount of hours yeah. in terms of sports and the passion and delivery every single fucking He's time. He's the bar. Bro, when I saw him during the He's pandemic the when there was no sports on, yeah. still finding a way to talk about sports. Yeah. Every day. But you realize, and you, re- you realize when he reads his book, it's because he loves so many things outside of sports. So he could... So he could talk about them through the lens of That's sports. That's right. He's, he's, uh, he's all. He's all. He said he loved. He actually enjoys talking about politics just as much as he enjoys talking uh, about sports. That's what he. That's what he said in his book. You know what I mean? Wow. So yeah, he 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 loves a lot of different things, and he likes talking about a lot of different topics. But I'm saying all that to say, go pick up Stephen A. Smith's book. I actually, I, you know what? I'm bugging. Okay. Plug. Right Imagine Plug. Stephen A. as a political pundit. That would That'd be crazy. crazy. You think so? That'd be crazy. Yeah. He'd be pissing off so many people if he was. Stephen A. Smith, Great Studer, a memoir of second chances and first takes. Man, you just man. had a T and shoot. What I say? Crazy. I don't know what you just said. <laughs> I, I know what you just said, bro. Say? Great I Studer? I got no clue what you just <laughs> I, said. Oh, I forgot the H? You know what it no, sounded you, like? <laughs> this is what it sounded like. You, you ever like, you ever like <laughs> fuck the night before and then you pee in the morning and it goes everywhere? <laughs> that's, what, that's what it just sounded like. <laughs> what, the little piece of cum sticking on your whole, <laughs> so your whole shit yeah, yeah, is like yeah, a shower. Yeah. Yeah. Straight yeah. shooter. <laughs> yeah. But go get straight shooter, man. It's a great well, I, Even then, dog. I, I don't know. <laughs> so, it's a, it's it's a going great on book, right now, man. bro. <laughs> it's one of them things. Oh, my God. Yeah. Let's pay some bills, man. Let's do it. Uh, let's, pay, let's take a break and pay some bills. Um, salute to Talkspace, man. Thank you, Talkspace, for always supporting the Brilliant Idiots podcast. You know, I'm a big, big, big proponent of therapy. So, therefore, I am a big advocate for Talkspace. Uh, Taylor. Taylor Gang. 
My name is Taylor. Yeah, and I'm a failure. Yeah, yeah. I might be a sailor. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> what? Talk space. What? Putting yourself first in the new wait, year. Wait, 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 wait. You were done with that, huh? <laughs> what? Keep going. You never heard that? No. Sha boing boing. Sha boing my, boing. My name is Taylor. How does it go? Yeah. What's the name of the song? Shabooty? How's it Shabuya? go? Shabuya. Come on, sing your song. You want to do your song, Taylor, if I do the ad? Do your song, yeah, Taylor. Do your song, do your song. Yeah. Boom, boom. <laughs> Let's go. Let's. Whoa. Whoa. Damn, Taylor. My name is Taylor. So you saying yeah. before I was okay? No, I'm not saying at all. Okay. Might Let's be go. a whaler. Yeah. That's not how it goes. All right. <laughs> we got to put the beat to no, it. Ready? <laughs> no, Bob Marley and the whalers, bro. Stop. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What? Go. No, because she like go? weed. Go. My name is Taylor. Yeah. I ain't wait the shits. Yeah. You hear that audio? Yeah. I got them clips. Yeah. But that's not Late. it. <laughs> yeah. Best belief. Yeah. I got the ten wait, sorry, I got the tiny mic jokes for the team. Yeah. <laughs> nah, that ain't it, y'all. You wanna go shows? Go shows. Go shows. All right, all right, I go. Uh, all right, I, was, I was about to walk up to Al. Okay, <laughs> okay. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. My name is Taylor. Yeah. Uh, I feed five, four, five. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> What? That's dope, though. Go. My name is Taylor. Yeah, yeah. feet five for fun. Yeah. yeah, what's my size? Yeah, yeah. them guys say fun. Yeah. yeah. Oh. Oh. Watch you steal them bars. Watch you steal them bars. Watch you steal them bars. You gonna steal them bars. God damn, Taylor. We just upgraded your song. Go remix. <laughs> yeah, because that shit you said about the clips, nobody gonna believe it. Yeah, nobody can. <laughs> huh? What you mean? What you mean? <laughs> what? <laughs> I agree. <laughs> Listen, Talkspace, <laughs> putting yourself first in the new year doesn't have to be a challenge thanks to Talkspace. Using Talkspace feels a little like having a mental health professional in your pocket. Talkspace offers therapy and psychiatry and being able to reach out to my provider anytime, anywhere makes taking care of my mental health super easy, okay? Whether you work in a managing everyday task, taking care of your own mental health has never been easier, all right? Working through things in therapy can be tough, but connecting with a therapist isn't. Plus, you can get help with or without insurance, okay? Most insured members only pay $25 copay or less. All right, y'all know I'm a big proponent of therapy, man, so I'm gonna always point you in the right direction of where you can get some affordable therapy. Talkspace is it. I wholeheartedly recommend Talkspace for therapy. And I know some people might say, ah, oh, but, you know, I wanna go sit on the couch and I wanna talk to somebody face-to-face. -face. You might not always be able to do that. You might not have the time to do that. You know, I've been doing, you know, more Zoom sessions with my new therapist than anything because my new therapist is all the way in Los Angeles. And let me tell you something. These sessions I'll be having with this individual over Zoom, whoa, they more enlightening. Um, I'm not gonna say more enlightening because my first therapist was great, but I've learned a lot. <laughs> you know what I mean? I've learned a lot uh, over 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 these these Zoom calls. You know what I mean? So do not sleep on things like Talkspace, all right? You can sign up online to get a personalized match with a provider that's right for you. Typically within 48 hours, you can text, video, or send voice messages to your licensed therapist so it's incredibly convenient to have virtual sessions from the comfort of your home. Talkspace has thousands of licensed therapists with years of experience and over 40 specialties including depression, anxiety, substance abuse, trauma, anger management, relationship issues, food and eating, and so much more. Best of all, Talkspace is secure and private using the latest in-the-end bank-grade encryption technology to store client information and comply with the latest HIPAA regulations. As a listener of this podcast, you'll get $100 off your first month with Talkspace when you go to Talkspace.com slash idiots. To match with a licensed therapist today, go to Talkspace.com slash idiots to get $100 off your first month and show your support for the show. That's Talkspace space.com slash idiots. Let's get back to the show. You got any church announcement, Schultz? I got a church announcement. What you got? This Friday, mm. which is, uh, hopefully this comes out before Friday, mm -hmm. but this Friday, uh, I think I got a couple lines in this uh, new Eddie Murphy, Jonah Hill. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I heard, I heard you do. I heard you do. I, okay. I heard you do. Um, our guy, DJ Head, saw it. Okay, yeah, shots ahead. And, and actually hit head. And I, I said, yo, Schultz, they kept Schultz in? And he was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. They, I, I forgot the scene. I, let me see. What's, you want me to tell people the scene he said? Or you don't? I don't care. What did he say to I me? think I have an idea. Let me tell you. He said, what did Head say? Head said, nah, he's in it. They kept his lines too. Oh, good. Oh, he actually didn't tell me what it was. Oh, no, he did. I don't know if he was joking, though. Was like a I said, with Schultz and you people? He said, hell yeah, doing mad coke. 
Yeah. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> True. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay. There's also that. <laughs> okay. I didn't know. That's what he said. He said yeah. he said they kept your lines. They, they kept your lines in there too. So go said. check it out, man. It was definitely obviously like bucket list to be in a movie with Eddie Murphy. He's the reason I did comedy. So or I do comedy. So that that was kind of crazy. And uh, and yeah, it's just I mean a lot of stars in this thing. Like a lot yeah. of very talented people. So. Make sure you go check that out Friday on Netflix. Netflix. Kenya got you in a couple of them things. Yo, man, Kenya's been fucking awesome to All me, right. man. So, All yeah, right. White Man Can't Jump. Yeah. Coming out. The joint with Snoop. Yeah, and then the Underdogs movie with Snoop. That would yeah. be cool. I think that's some more- You in there a lot. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah so, yeah. We'll, see what, uh, we'll see what goes down with that, man. But I was seeing some stuff from the uh, the White Man Can't Jump movie as well. So, I have some some stuff in Significant there. Significant- Roles in that too? No, nah, that's more just kind of like me popping in and you know yeah, being yeah, funny yeah, and yeah, then yeah. popping out. Yeah. But uh, but yeah, it's 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 cool, man. It's been definitely cool to see these projects and also cool to just see how to make how many people have to come together to make a film. Oh man! And it is to in my opinion like the highest level of storytelling. Uh, okay, let me take that back. Second, I think novel is the most yeah in depth version of storytelling. Yes. Yes. But a novel is something that you can do by yourself. Yes. Uh, and and, uh, and so many great movies have come from novels. The best ones. Yeah, Only yeah. the best Absolutely. ones. And no, that is absolutely. a testament to what novels absolutely. are, the worlds that you can create with a novel, absolutely. right? Like, a hundred percent. So all respect to that. Absolutely. In terms of, like, the visual demonstration of a story. I agree. It's, I know, agree. film, the long-form TV shows. I agree. Like, that is, to me, and that's what I want to make. So... You know, I want us to I want us to do a movie, man. I agree. We will. So we gotta we gotta make sure that we indulge in this process and understand this process so we can get it out there. It's gonna happen though. The movie that we do is the movie that has to like it has to both get us the love that we want and the cancellation. We have to be canceled completely. Yeah, absolutely. It's like we gotta bring back rated our movies. <laughs> That's really what absolutely. it comes down to. Absolutely. And it's gotta be absolutely. Yeah, it's absolutely. gonna be fire. And the reason I say it has to get the love, because it has to be the one that Makes us the most money that we we good we cash out. <laughs> See, one time, one time you go to Anguilla, I go to Costa Rica, we out of here. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> no, I agree. Uh, uh, my church announcement Wednesday, February eighth, from seven p.m. to eight thirty p.m. Uh, at the Brooklyn Public Library. The Brooklyn Public Library presents uh, with Atria Books and Simon and Schuster, Charlemagne the God's Black Privilege Publishing, a special one time in person event in Brooklyn with Anita Kopax, the author of Shallow Waters. That was the second release on my book in print, Black Privilege Publishing. And Tamika D. Mallory, uh, which State of Emergency, How to Win in the Country We Built. That was the first uh, release off Black Privilege Publishing. And we'll be there from 7 to 8.30 p.m. talking about Black Privilege Publishing and signing copies of all of those books. And um, I hope, man, that I'll be able to announce our, that Jesus Christ, Taylor. I hope that I'll be able to announce our prior to that. Uh, there'll be some announcements about the other releases that we have coming out this year. You know, we have uh, we have three releases scheduled for this year. Can we discuss? Nah, I don't want. I don't like. I don't want to step on nobody's rollout. You okay. know what I mean? And right, I am. I, I'm just gonna say I'm. I, when 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 these get announced, especially one of them, y'all gonna know like wow, because you you're gonna know how much it uh it means to me. To be, to be doing this. Why? 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 Yeah, I don't want to give too much. I, I, when 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 it when it gets announced properly, it'll get announced, you know, properly. But we got three releases coming out this year. At least no less than three, uh, no more than two. Definitely. Wow, that's so, awesome. Yeah. So thank you to everybody that's been supporting uh, Black Privilege. <laughs> what, what did I say? No less than three. <laughs> no, I said no more than three. No, no less than two. two. No less than no three. Less no than more than, three, than no two. Y'all know I'm stupid. <laughs> <laughs> Why do y'all do this to me? You know, I'm like, y'all know what I meant. No or less. Maybe than y'all eight. didn't. You're, you're right. Yeah. What do you say? No less. Than no three. more than three. <laughs> no less no than less two. No less than three. No more, more than, than two. two. <laughs> what are you supposed to say? He what said no less than three. No like, more than, so you will it's not, not no more than three? No, no, you said no boy. You said it's no less than three. That means it is impossible for there to be less than three. And then you immediately followed it with with hold on. No so, more than two. Oh Ain't no God. way that you're putting out like more. You talk for oh a living. <laughs> that's gonna be that's I, I that's raw entertainment. I'm gonna be honest with you. That's we got what a, that is. We got a biography coming out as a memoir about abortions, and that's the title of it that I just put out. Yo, God. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> what? Yeah. What? It's a pro Roe v. Wade book, bro. <laughs> what do you mean? <laughs> what are y'all talking about? All right. Oh, shit, um, man. Oh, man. Did you see the good sister, Young yeah. Miami, talking about urine therapy? Talk to me about urine therapy. Yes, yeah, you're talking about urine therapy. Let's hear it. Okay, well, we'll insert it later. Um, the thing about the Young Miami clip is that if that's her kink, that's her kink, no, wait, bro. Can you explain what she did? She said she liked golden showers. There's nothing to talk about. She likes getting peed on. She likes getting peed on. She okay. said it does something to her. And, you know, of course, everybody ran with it and came up with the term P. Diddy, which is incredible. <laughs> incredible. But, you know, I don't know why y'all think that it was Diddy that was doing it. Uh, you know what I mean? We don't know who's Pete is. Yeah. We are, yo, we are ridiculous people when it comes to the internet. We really yeah. think, the, we think everybody's world is what we see online. Yeah, yeah, Let me tell you yeah, something. Yeah. Young Miami is 28 years old. Yeah. Diddy is the latest guy we know she's been with. Yeah. You don't just jump to Pete. <laughs> yeah. You know yeah, yeah, I mean? yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, like that ain't, you don't wait till 28 to start liking to get peed on. Yeah. Bro. Okay? Knock yeah. it off. I just feel like you ran out of things to do if you start peeing on each other. Like, I don't think you should pee on nobody in a warm weather state. Yeah, I think that that's also a really good theory. That would be like an up north thing. Like, if you up yeah, north, like winners, buff oh, come on. You hop out of an ice bath, just get fucking hosed down with Come urine. on, man. <laughs> yeah, so you warm up. That's, that's, that's what I'm saying, yes. Yeah, 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 like, yeah. that's what I'm saying. You yeah. know, it peed on in Miami. It's too happy that shit. Nah, you don't, yeah, 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 yeah. You can't do that in Miami. And the way she explained it, she was like, it happens in the shower. You know what I oh, mean? Oh, but that's like a joke. What do you mean? <laughs> the peeing on each other in the shower is like a funny joke that you just don't tell your partner and then you start peeing and then yeah. they're like, what are you doing? The other thing that nobody's realizing <laughs> in this is Trina. Trina says she likes to pee on people too, huh? Let me hear it. Hey, why I picked this one? Oh, Lord. What is it? <laughs> no. I can't say it. You got to. It says take a shot. It's like golden showers. I do. Golden showers. Meaning when the guy pees on you, mm -hmm. pee on you everywhere, you like it? I just like it. You do? Mm -hmm. Freak. <laughs> Freak of the week. Uh, it's fun. Yeah. Like, you know, when you was drunk and you just... And they just peeing all over your body? You just like, you know, peeing your butt, peeing your pussy. I don't, I don't know. <laughs> and then y'all still have sex after? <laughs> it, it depends like you can pee on me in the shower you can pee on me like once you come like, it just depends it just, it just depends on how the night flow I gotta is. try this out go to shower if you gonna take one more cause that go to shower huh? that's lit that's lit I'm that's so lit. confused by this why like how many things need to happen before you even find out you like this that's what I'm saying this didn't just start happening with P. Diddy bro no, not at all. No. But like, there's so many different things need to happen in your life before you get to, I enjoy getting peed on. The word is born. Because you don't start with that. No, that's, that's, that's like, that's AP class. That's AP. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, it's AP class. <laughs> 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 that's a double entendre. Don't ask me how. Like, wow. I didn't mean it to be like that. But it's AP. Chosen one. That's, that's where you got to go chosen that's a, one, bro. That's right. <laughs> Sometimes it's, you know what I mean? Sometimes it's chosen one right there, bro. But, but it wow, is, though. That's, that's AP class. <laughs> that's <laughs> flames right there. It could be a P bro. class, advanced plate, and whatever. Yeah. But it is, though. You don't just yeah. jump to that. You yeah, know yeah, that's, that's you know how many steps you gotta toward. skip to get to that. But that's also something that's like at twenty eight, where are you gonna go? Like, that's young man. You don't want to find that out till you're like fifty. Let me tell you something. First of all, when I I, I was one of those people. That when Trina and Young Miami, when that shit went live, on you were Revolt, on it I, right there, bro. Because you knew. In the first of all, how do you? How can you? First of all, I love Miami women. Yeah, I love Florida women. Period. Really? Yes. Why is that? Because ain't nothing real. Ooh. But I, that also that's also because Florida women remind me of like Carolina women from South Carolina. Like yeah. there's there's nothing real. You get two women from Miami, two from Jacksonville, two from uh, Orlando. That's like talking to two women from Charleston or Columbia. It's like yo, you gonna get that real raw, honest conversation. I was all in, mm. and there was so many like topics of discussion that came out of that interview about relationships and everything else. I mm. thoroughly thoroughly enjoyed it. Mm. You know what I mean? Thoroughly, thoroughly, thoroughly enjoyed it. So, you know, I don't, you know, I've never peed on anybody. Have You said you have. Listen, my wife got a jellyfish thing when we were off the Amalfi Coast. You're in, you're in therapy. And I use urine therapy to save her life. That's right. That's right. I don't see the problem. She's urine still therapy. alive. That's right. And we don't talk about urine therapy enough. It cures pink eye. 
I, I, well, she didn't have pink eye. She had a jellyfish thing. Anybody out there dealing with pink eye right now? Get a little tissue. Yeah. A little dab of the pee. No. Oh, and then. That's it. Just put it right there for a second. No Bum. one. No one do that. No. I've done it. No, Charlotte. I've absolutely done it. Google it. If I, Google it. Oh, dude. Somebody's Google gonna urine for pink eye. I'm telling you the truth. truth. No, 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 no. Don't give off. Med- Listen, no. don't take Bro. medical advice from someone that God who thinks you. he can turn into a fucking wolf Son. and levitate. You I'm sound like you. Trump right now. Like, just inject the Clorox in your skin. Yeah, don't <laughs> Google like, it, Taylor. <laughs> this is the most he did what? southern <laughs> shit. <laughs> Taylor going to put he did in all Sean Combs catalog going to come up. Put u- put urine in pink eye. I'm looking this shit up right now. Put huh. urine in pink eye. This is the most southern shit I've hey, look, 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 look. You ain't got to tell me. I've done it. I'm not. This, no. this ain't one of them ones I've heard. I've done this. It says it can cause blindness. That's not true. <laughs> exactly. That's only if you eat You going to tell the Indian that it's not true, bro? The <laughs> one medical <laughs> professional we got in this fucking room right now. People using pee to cure pink eye. Doctor warns against remedy. Of course, that's big pharma, bro. Big pharma, don't want <laughs> big pharma don't want you using holistic methods of motherfucking cure. So they don't want you, doctor. That's all it is. <laughs> they don't want you using holistic methods that to cure fact, yourself. Bro. That is come fact. on. Nah, nah, How the fuck is pee called blindness? Wait, so you got pink eye and then got a golden shout? No, I just no, dabbed pee. his own pee with a conjugal, see, con- conjugal, great. whatever the fuck conjugal that word is. Conjugal visit. Conjugal yeah, visit. That's right. <laughs> a pink eye outbreak. Yeah, the most prominent among the methods reporting is urine to wash the infected eyes. However, wa- Dr. Leon Vaughn warned that using urine and other home remedies is a dangerous practice. Urine, breast milk, bussy tea? They got bussy tea? <laughs> yo, stop. <laughs> they got bussy? What the fuck is bussy tea, yo? <laughs> ah! Ah! <laughs> Jason Lee, I think we got a name for your room report segment. Pussy <laughs> tea. Oh, I just imagine a gay dude dipping their butt into a hot tub. Just... <laughs> oh my god! Oh my god! All right, listen, I've known people Pussy that have been using tea. urine for pink eye for years, and I ain't never heard about nobody going blind, yo. Straight up. And um, baby pee is used for acne. Yeah, urine therapy is a real thing. This guy is nuts. Huh? What? what Hold on, what'd you say, Taylor? Say that into a mic. Boom, boom. <laughs> what? <laughs> what? <laughs> My name is Taylor. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, Taylor. Saying, they say the same thing about cum. People say. Who is they? Yo. They people. <laughs> wow. wow. You just put yourself on Yo. the LGBTQIA Disney Plus community? Yeah. Whoa. Oh, they are they, too. They are they. they are yeah, they. some of them are <laughs> they. <laughs> you know what I mean? Well, I've heard. Yes. That, imagine um, imagine um, trying to be politically correct. You're like, <laughs> you you want to say he, like, they come to me. <laughs> You're like, what? <laughs> you let a train? They ran a train on you? <laughs> what? <laughs> Don't they say the same thing if you eat a girl out and it helps your beard grow and then they say the same thing? No, I've heard that. Girls be making that shit up. Nobody says anything about what girls are like. You put cum on your face. Then you I don't know. So it's been cum mad easy face. for you to grow facial hair since you've been married, I'm bro. I'm just saying. <laughs> happy wife, happy life. Oh, <laughs> uh, what else we got, Taylor? <laughs> that, <yeah. laughs> Taylor, <laughs> that is true, though, man. It does clear up That is like one right? of the most unselfish acts. God damn. Damn, Taylor. <laughs> God damn, Taylor. Back it up, Taylor. Back it up, Taylor. Back it up, Taylor. Back it up, Taylor. My name is Taylor. Yeah. <laughs> My Come name on. Is Taylor. Yeah. <laughs> Come on, Taylor. My name is Taylor. Yeah. Come on, Taylor. Sing that Come shit. on, Taylor. <laughs> My name is Taylor. Yeah, and I wear Uggs. Yeah. <laughs> when do we clap on the yeah or not the yeah? <laughs> My name is Taylor. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> My name is Taylor. Yeah. <laughs> My name is. When do you clap for that shit? No, when do you clap? <laughs> when My name is Taylor. Clap? Yeah. Taylor, come on, stop playing. Yeah. You're jumping around this, this studio. Like, you know, there's a bull in the china shop. <laughs> Jesus Christ. A bull. A yeah, bull. A, a Philly bull in the china shop. A, yes. Come on, for real. Let's go. Um, Listen. Taylor, come on. And where is the clap? My name is Taylor. Yeah. yeah. I just hit it. My name is Taylor. Yeah. 
My name is Taylor. Yeah, Hiya. and I like Uggs. Yeah, Hiya. I'm from Philly. Yeah, Hiya. home of the thugs. Thugs. Hiya. I like bulls. Bulls Hiya. and some Johns. Johns. I, I don't know. <laughs> yeah. Taylor, you don't got no bars for None, you? None, man. I'm trying to set this You're trying oh to what? God. You know what I want to say, too? Uh, oh. Salute to the Golden State Warriors, man. Oh. Andrew Wiggins and Jordan Poole. With Thurston? Whoa. Different levels, bro. Whoa. But we don't know what she got back there. But I've been around Kamala Harris a million times. And? What she got? I never noticed. Because you're, 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 you're a faithful black man, bro. Probably. I, like, I was sitting there thinking that. I'm like, why? I'm like, they were looking like, you know, listen, there's, there's, there's some OG queens out here who shall remain nameless that, you know, you'd be like, whoa, who? Can I get to the Yams? You know what who, I'm saying? Who, 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 I'm not who, who. saying. You're saying mm. that there are some some women that got the yams, bro. The yams, bro. Like some. Crazy and I've never, I've never, I've never looked at the vice Ooh, president Angela like that. Bassett? N no, I would never disrespect Angela like that. Why is that disrespect yeah. to say that she's got a beautiful body? It's disrespectful. I don't think that's disrespectful. She's nominated for an Oscar too. <laughs> so I can't say that she got the fat dumper. I can't. No, nah, you can't do that, man. You salute to Courtney B. Vance, her husband, and, and there's certain women. Sorry, I mean all women you should talk to with a certain you know Level amount of respect, respect. but definitely. How Ms. can Angela we respectfully Bassett? acknowledge and honor a fat shit cutter? <laughs> Talk about it amongst your friends. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> amongst each other. You're saying that we, we can't never, just do it on nah, the no there's, there's no, there, Nah, there's no way to do it publicly. There's you know no saying? way. You know how you do it? When Talk they win an now. award? Just, standing just a standing ovation. Standing ovation. God bless. You know what I mean? Oh, when they're giving a speech? Standing ovation. <laughs> you know what I mean? Standing ovation, you know. <laughs> Andrew Wiggins is crazy. You know? Andrew Wiggins was acting like the camera wasn't on. Bro. Yeah, at he's least from you, Canada, bro. They don't got milk like that up there, bro. You think so? Nah, nah, nah. not known for milk like that. Yeah, but they were looking like they were like fat man. asses are more of like a like a like a warm climate thing. <laughs> you don't find fat asses in cold weather. Interesting. Yeah, it's too much. It's too much body meat in a place yo, that you might don't be, need. That might be true, yo. Yeah, because even when you go in America, like up north, you're not gonna find no fat ass in Vermont. You got to go down. Nah, you're right. You yeah, want to go to Maine? No fat that. asses. Once you cross that Mason Dixon line, that's Ooh. when it's like on. Oh. Yeah, 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 definitely. Yeah. You cross the Mason Dixon, them ass start popping out. I never thought about 100%. that. Hundred percent. We had to import asses to New York, Puerto mm -hmm. Rico. We had to import that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. There wasn't real ass in New York before Puerto Ricans start yeah, coming up. Yeah, 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 yeah. Damn, I never thought about that. Hundred percent. Most of fat asses Damn. in New York is imported. So thank God for the Bronx. Bro, the reason why the North of America, the reason why they fought the war, <laughs> the Civil War, yeah. was to bring some ass up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's really, that. if you actually look into what Abraham Lincoln was talking about. Yeah. Did you know that? Uh-uh. Well, it's facts. I, no, I, I, it makes sense. There's it an ophthalmological sense. society of Jamaica. I don't even know what that Wait, means. what? I don't know. I was reading whatever know Taylor had up on her. <laughs> I, 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 I just, I just know, goddamn, Andrew Wiggins, do a better goddamn job of what you're peeking at. Andrew Wiggins and Jordan Poole, do a better job of what you're peeking at, man. Oh, man. Yeah, they was peeping too much. You know what I mean? But I bet you that got him. You think that makes the vice president feel good when she goes back and watches it? Like I still got it. I think that she does feel good, and I also understand specifically the Golden State Warriors. I mean, they're in San Francisco, right? The largest population of Asians of any city in the United States of America. They're not used to seeing that Jamaican dumper, right? So they're going to be freaked out a little bit when it's right in front of them like that. When Kamala brought out the coconut cake, do you really think, you really think Jordan Poole and who else? <laughs> Andrew Wiggins was going to be able to control them. Oh, my God. <laughs> Come on, bro. That beef patty. Just that beef dance. patty. <laughs> you know what I mean? Dance hall waiting to thunderclap that. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, bro. He's so stupid. I'm just saying. It's, I, hey, I don't blame that, bro. Oh, man. <laughs> I don't blame them, bro. Speaking of the uh, the White House, though, you see Biden. Let's speak about Biden it. Biden got caught again. With what? This is the fourth time they done found classified documents. Oh, no. And and liberal media is still acting like, you know, that, that, shit is different. Oopsie doopsie. It's huh? oopsie doopsie. You know what's so interesting about this thing now is when is when they say, uh, well, the difference is the obstruction. That was the excuse for us. The difference is the obstruction. You know, Joe Biden cooperated and, you know, he gave over the documents right away. So how come y'all keep finding them? Mm. That happened once. Mm. <laughs> that happened once when his lawyers were helping him move and they found the documents. 
The other three times y'all found more documents. Why didn't they turn those over if he's cooperating so much? Yeah. Nah, it's, it's all three, bullshit. In, th- in three different places. Yeah. They found him in his house in Delaware. But from what they explained, they said um, once they found the first one, then they're like, oh, we'll open it up so you guys can search every place else. They got and no so choice by then. No, I know. The DOJ would have did it themselves. And yeah. so that's why they're trying to make the <laughs> claim is that, oh, when we tried to subpoena Trump to search, they wouldn't let it. That's why we had to like go in force. Okay, so let's talk about it, right? Nice. Trump. They said that the difference between Trump is obstruction and that he was intentional, you know, in taking the documents and intentional and in, in not giving them giving them back, right? He knew he had them and didn't want to give them back. Mm. So if that's the case, right, if Biden didn't have any intention and he didn't know, isn't that gross negligence? Whoa. Isn't that highly irresponsible Whoa. of a senator Whoa. and a vice president and now the president of the United States of America? Hey, isn't yo. that incompetence on the highest fucking level? Super A-yo. Come on. <laughs> Super A-yo. <laughs> like, like, yeah. Hiding documents is wild A-yo. <laughs> like, come on. Yeah. Like, it's, yeah. it's unbelievable. And it's just, it, I love watching the news and watching people, you know. Cap. Cap. About the Cap differences, and and yeah. they and, and they keep saying it over and over because this is this is textbook media, right? There's a big difference between Trump and Biden. Like and, and the more you say it, people just they run with it. Yeah. Until you ask somebody, well, what's the difference? <laughs> and then they can't even tell you. They just mm. they're repeating it because the news keeps telling them that it's a big difference. Yeah. Mm. There really is no difference. You get caught four times, four different places with classified documents. Mm. You can only use that obstruction mm. shit once. Mm. Mm. Now what? Now your president is just grossly irresponsible and clearly always has been because this shit has been going on since he's been in the Senate. Yeah, that shit. So it's just like, <laughs> get the true. fuck out of here. It's just, I, it's just, it's disgusting, man. Uh, men who use Viagra are 25% less likely to suffer early death. Wow. How do you feel about that? That's just big farm. Here's my feeling on this. Okay. If you still fucking, there's something to live for. Mm-hmm. If you're not fucking, early death doesn't seem that bad. Yeah. So I don't think that, I think the people that are not still fucking are probably living a more unhealthy lifestyle. Yeah, It yeah, would yeah, lead yeah. them to an early death. I don't think it's actually the Viagra that's making it happen. I think it's the fact that you're still pursuing something that keeps you alive. Yeah, 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 yeah. And um, if you're still fucking, you're getting cardio in. Boom. She said, I said, if you still fucking get cardio in, no, that makes sense. That makes sense. Eh, I'm with it. You know, pop the Viagra, have sex. Get it pop. You know, whether you live long or, you know, die early. At least you die hard. (laughs) 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 Yo, give us some Aska idiots or something, man. The fuck? (laughs) 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 Oh, Alex Baldwin. This is fucked up, yo. Alex Baldwin should not be charged with involuntary manslaughter. He should be charged with murder. No, he shouldn't. Yeah, he did. Why? Why he tried to kill her? No, he didn't. He pulled the trigger. You're an actor on a set. It's not my job to make sure that the gun is is is. Why are there real bullets in this gun? Murderer, bro. No, sure. bro. <laughs> that no. guy's a murderer. This bro. is this is so wrong on That's so many levels. No, it's not. And I hope that he sues the shit out of the production company. I hope he sues the shit out of the the the, the, the Santa Fe Police Department, or whoever the fuck arrested him, because I don't see how he gets charged with manslaughter in this situation. He's a producer of the movie. So what? And also, maybe there's a rule that you never actually pull the trigger unless it's the scene, or maybe it wasn't actually checked on or something. Also, he just seems like the type of guy that would try to kill somebody. You think so? Yeah. I don't think he should be charged with nothing. I think the person that loaded the gun should be charged. Yo. Whoever's job it was was to make sure that that gun uh, didn't have real ammo in it, they should be charged. Yeah, you ready for a good one? Let's talk about it. You ready for a good one, bro? Okay. Okay, you know he just had his seventh kid, right? (laughs) Who? Who? Baldwin. He did? Yeah, 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 yeah. Why do you have his seventh kid, Charlotte? I don't know. Because he don't shoot blanks, you know what I mean? All right. All right. All right. All right. That was the alley-oop for you. I I thought you had that one. I know. I I didn't know. (laughs) (laughs) Kids is touchy, man. Kids is touchy. (laughs) This guy. This guy is so crazy. I don't know. Come on, bro. Let's do some masking idiots, Taylor. I threw that one up for you. I thought you had that one, bro. (laughs) Come on. (laughs) Okay. 
Texas basketball. Oh, you want to do it over? And I, I don't get you. Right, ready? Come, ready? On. <laughs> Come, on. Come on. Okay. Okay, Charlotte. I got one for you. You ready? What? Okay. You know, he just had his seventh kid, right? Alec Baldwin? Yeah, 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 true? yeah, yeah. He just had a seven kid. He just had a seven kid. Why did he just have a seven kid, huh? I mean, clearly because he doesn't shoot blanks. This guy is so stupid. Oh, yo, leave both of them in. Yeah. Leave both of them in. Leave both of them in. Leave both of them in. Oh, my God. I mean, Clearly, because he doesn't shoot uh, blanks. <laughs> yeah, but that, but that, but that. Yeah, but that, but that. <laughs> okay, let's do some masking idiots. All right. Oh, go. man. Oh, this is a good one. Texas takes Brazil. How do you know when you're playing it too safe, career-specific? Ooh, this That's is a good a one. Good question. What do you, what do you think? <laughs> you don't. <laughs> <laughs> you don't. Yeah. Because like, like we, I was talking about earlier when it came to Stephen A. Smith, intention versus... Impact. Mm. You know, my intention is never to. Now, there's been times in my career where my intention was, oh, I'm going, I'm going to give it to this person. You know what I'm mm -hmm. saying? But there's been times like, like just now that joke we made. To me, that's just a joke. Yeah, and it's funny. Hilarious. But somebody be like, oh, yeah, that that was harmful. You know what I mean? Like, mm -hmm. I, I don't. You know, I didn't mean. I, we didn't mean it to be. No, we meant it to be funny. You know what I mean? So I, I don't think you know when you're playing it too safe. Because there's even been times where like. I thought I've said everything I wanted to say, mm. whether it's in an interview or mm. in a commentary. And I'm like, fuck, I should have said X, Y, and Z. Mm. And then it'll make you feel like you didn't take it far take enough. It there, yeah. You know what I mean? But then yeah. you'll see the feedback and everybody like, nah, that's exactly what was supposed yeah. to be said. So it's like, you know, you just don't know. You don't know until you have gone too far. Yeah. Most of the time. Yeah. How's he asking it, Taylor? I was just taking it as like if you're too comfortable in your career. Like, oh, you safe like oh that. no, I didn't take it like yeah, that. Yeah, I didn't take it like that. I yeah, like you may be playing safe because you don't want to lose the opportunity. That's a, I mean, what Taylor's saying isn't wrong, no. Yeah. Like there, that's a that is another way of playing it safe in your career. Uh, I think that's the worst when it, when if you're doing things to keep a position yeah. and it's not what you actually want to do, yeah. that shit is going to devastate you when you Game find over. when you get fired. Yep, 100%. You know what I mean? I'd rather get fired for pushing. knowing, pushing it. You know what I mean? I did everything I was supposed to do. I took chances. I took risks. Getting fired I, for playing safe. Is... Ooh, ooh, that's the worst, bro. What do you think, Shos? How do you know when you're playing it too safe? I don't know. I think when I'm playing defense. Like, I want to be shooting. I want to yeah, be yeah, on yeah. offense. I want to be moving. I want to be pushing. And then when I start playing defense, it feels like I'm worried about losing something. And I don't like that feeling ever because of what you just described. Like, yeah. imagine losing it anyway and you were pussy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah. Steven, they got a chapter in this book called Natural Born Contrarian. Mm, and he talks it. about Skip Bayless. And he talks about how Skip Bayless is a natural born contrarian. And he said he didn't realize that until they started working together. You know what I mean? Because, you know, you can have you know, he said they'd be on air sometime and Skip would be having these wild takes and he'd be like, you know, when the mic's on Skip, you don't really mean that. And he'll be like, yeah. Skip be like dead ass and go deeper into, you know what I mean? To what he actually felt. So yeah. it's just like some people are just like that. Some people just are wired different. They see the world different. You know uh -huh. what I mean? So you, you can't even be mad at him. Oh, uh, ooh, this is a good one. Estor Estoric. Esoteric. Mo Esoteric. Mokel says, how are you guys able, able to be neutral when it comes to the political affairs of the United States of America? Good one. Good one. I don't think we are. You don't think I, we're neutral? I, I think we're very neutral. Oh. I think we're very objective with both sides. Oh, oh, we're objective, but I don't think that we're like, I, I guess I don't know, understand what neutral really means that much in terms. I feel like we're passionate about the things. We're not choosing we, a side. Yes. I, I, I'm not. You know okay, what I mean? Okay, if that's what he means. Like, yeah, we're we're we choose a side yeah. based on each issue, and that might be left, it might be right. Yeah, but we're reacting to the issue instead of just grabbing onto a party's belief system and then saying, "You tell me how I feel." Or grabbing onto a party's balls. Yeah, exactly. Riding nah. the party's dick wild crazy. Nah, nah. That's, you know what I mean? Nah, like a lot of the liberal media is doing right now with Joe Biden. Yeah, exactly. can't even motherfucking just admit that you know My what man he did is up. he fucked up. Yeah. Like, you know what I mean? Or Admit the other dude didn't fuck up. 
One of the two, it's right? One of the other. One of yeah. the two. And Yo, call yourself out. Man, I was watching Dana Bash on Sunday morning. And what is Sunday morning? It was Sunday morning or Saturday night. And they had, I forgot the person that they had on there. But, you know, they had the person on there talking about the Biden classified documents. And mm. Dana was like, I want to play you a clip of you talking about Trump's classified documents. And he's on there. This is so irresponsible. Yeah. It's probably criminal. And this is not, like, I mean, just going in. But Biden was like, oh, you know, first of all, it's much different than the Trump situation. And, you know, and when she played that clip for him, he had to change his fucking tune. What did he say? He, he, he was just like, well, of course it's just as irresponsible. Why you ain't leave with that? Yeah. yeah Why you ain't leave with yeah. that? Because he I'm knows telling who you, daddy I, is. I want. <laughs> That's it. No, nah, he knows who granddaddy is. Yeah, I want crazy. everybody to remember who was bullshitting you at times like this. Because at times like this, this is the person that's been bullshitting you the whole time. Mm -hmm. I don't like hypocrisy, bro. Mm -hmm. Even though we all contradict ourselves in different ways. Yes. But come on. Some shit you just got to look at and be like, come that's on, it. bro. Come that's on. That's it. Man. Simple as that. Uh, this is a good end on this one. Ooh. Jalen Klim says, how do you deal with failure in healthy ways? <sighs> You learn, man. What did we say? We had that episode of way uh, way back. It was called um, "You Win or You Learn." When do you learn? Yeah, and I think that was, yeah, I think that was definitely transformative for me. It's like every loss, if you can flip that into some sort of like knowledge gain that prepares you in the future, then that's huge, man. So, yeah, looking at life like that, like that, every failure is just going to propel you and make you better, make you stronger, and give you something to learn from. I think that is that is huge, huge, and also knowing that like. Failure means at least you tried. How many people ain't even failing That's because right. they're not even trying? That's right. Like, yeah, you got to you gotta go for it. Yeah. I agree with that wholeheartedly. It's ex exactly everything Andrew said verbatim. Like, you know, you, you, you deal with failure in healthy ways by not looking at it as a failure. You know what I mean? It's just something that you learn from said experience. I look at it as an experience that didn't go the way you wanted it to go. Mm. But what did you learn from said experience? Mm. You know what I mean? Just because something didn't go the way you wanted it to go, as long as you learn from it, Everything is a okay. That's it, Taylor Gang. We outside, huh? Can okay. we just do one last rap with Taylor instead? Come on, come on, come on. You ready? Let's go, come Taylor. On, Taylor. Come Let's on, Taylor. Come on, Taylor. I know you come got on, some Taylor. bars. You done thought come about on, it. Come on, Taylor. Come on, man. Come on, come on. Taylor. Come on. We did it. No, it's more fun with you. No, I like doing yours. My name Lenard, yeah, and I'm the God, yeah. Got a colon cleanse and I woke up hard, yeah. Yo. In your butt? Oh, what? Oh, hold on, I got more. Hold on, I got some more. Hold on, I got more? some more. Right, I thought, sorry, hold on. Sorry, sorry, let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go. Let's go. Hey, hey, my name Lenard, yeah. yeah, and I'm the God. No, hold on. Hold on. Yeah, yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. My name Lenard, yeah, and I'm the God, yeah. Got a colon cleanse and I woke up hard, yeah. <laughs> Nigga, what? Huh? In your butt? Huh? <laughs> Relax, I look like Morris Chestnut. Oh, hey! <laughs> you can't follow that, Taylor. Taylor, you can't follow that. Walk away from the mic right now. Save yourself. Back away. Walk away from the mic and save yourself. Back away, yo. Back away. You don't want that smoke? I gotta write stuff down before I... All right, so you're saying next week you come with bars for Charlotte? Jesus Ooh. Christ. Uh, don't 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 don't. No, she did. She used to have a she she, she used to have a rap group. Don't Australia, do this yo. to yourself. That shit was sad. What was it called? The Eagles, yo. No, it wasn't. Yes, it was, yo. It was the Eagles. It was called the Eagles, yo. The birds, <laughs> the fucking birds, Man, the what? birds from Philly, what? birds what? in the hood. <laughs> <laughs> Birds in the hood. The real birds of Lord Darby. <laughs> That's what it was called. Uh, as always, if you listen to this podcast, you think we're smart, you think we're intelligent, you're absolutely right. But if you listen to this podcast, you think we're just a couple idiots who don't know shit, you're right too. It's the brilliant this podcast. Thank you for listening.